Let's use what we know about stoichiometry to calculate percent yield. Now let's start out with some definitions. Percent yield is actually going to compare what you get in your lab experiment, that's your actual yield, it's what's actually made during the reaction. And you compare that to the theoretical yield. The theoretical yield is what should be made in the lab activity. Um, the theoretical yield is a calculated yield. It comes from a balanced equation. That's the stoichiometry that you've been doing. Now when you study percent yield, the formula, the way they're compared, is to divide the actual yield from the lab by the theoretical calculated yield, and you multiply that by 100 to give yourself a percent. Now, ideally, percent yield should not go over 100 percent. If it does go over 100 percent, some sort of a contamination or error has occurred in your lab experiment. Let's look at some problems. Here we're given that 6.78 grams of copper is produced when 3.92 grams of aluminum is reacted with extra copper 2 sulfate. And the balanced equation is given below. It's a single replacement reaction. So we need to find a couple of things here. First of all, what is the actual yield? Well, remember the definition of actual. Actual is the amount of product that is made during the experiment. What I want to do here in identifying it is just read out of context. The actual yield is going to be the copper that is produced. So when you read that question, it tells you 6.78 grams of copper is produced. So that's our actual yield. You want to look for words like produced, formed, during the lab, or in a reaction, something that would indicate to you that it's really happening. Right, so if that's the actual yield, let's figure out what's the theoretical yield. Now theoretical yield is going to be how much copper should we get? Well, I know that I'm starting with 3.92 grams of aluminum. This is going to be a stoichiometry problem. So remember the first step is to convert grams to moles. I know I need the grams of aluminum to cancel out and I'm looking for moles of a table. I know that, let's look it up here real fast, has a mass of 27 grams. So one mole is 27 grams. That's going to cancel the grams of aluminum. The next step is to convert the moles of aluminum. So I'm going to let that cancel. I need to find moles of copper because copper is what I'm going to be comparing the actual and the theoretical for. This is the mole ratio, and that comes from the coefficients in the balanced equation. So up here in front of copper, there's a 3, and over on the left side in front of aluminum, there's a 2. Moles of aluminum cancels with moles of aluminum, and then finally, I can convert the moles of copper to grams of copper. And I'm going to use the molar mass from the periodic table for copper. I know that one mole of copper has a mass of 64 grams. So moles of copper cancels with moles of copper. Now when I get ready to do the math, I'm going to multiply everything across the top of those fractions. So I'm going to have 3.92 times 1 times 3 times 64 and then I'm going to divide by everything on the bottom. So I'm going to divide by 27, and I'm going to divide by 2. And the answer that I get here is 13 point, I'm going to round off a little bit, 13.9. Oh, I've run out of slide. The answer that I get here is 13.9 grams of copper. That's how much copper I should produce. Now, percent yield, remember, is comparing those two. And that's the next step here. The percent yield is going to be to compare the actual yield to the theoretical yield. So let's go ahead and set that up. My actual is 6.78 grams. 
and my theoretical is at 13.9 grams. Now, the grams are going to cancel out, and remember you want to multiply by 100 to make it a percent in the end. So in the calculator, 6.78 divided by 13.9 times 100, that gives me a percent yield of 48.8%. And that's the percent yield for this reaction. So it's a little low. Not all of our reactant was converted to product or something else is going on that prevents us from having a higher yield. Okay? Let's take a look at another one. This is the reaction where ammonia is produced from hydrogen and nitrogen. If we start with 55.6 grams of hydrogen like you see here, and it reacts to produce 354 liters of ammonia, what is the percent yield? Now that seems like a straightforward question, actual over theoretical, but be careful that your units for the numbers are the same, and do you really have actual and theoretical? You may have to do some stoichiometry before you can do the problem. That's what happens in this question. Stoichiometry gives you the theoretical yield. So this time, I took the grams of hydrogen that I started with, and I converted to moles. Then I used the mole ratio. And then I used a review conversion, which was 22.4 liters in one mole of ammonia. That gives me my theoretical yield. Now, that gives me 415 liters of ammonia. That's how much I should get. But remember back in the problem, it told me that I only got 354 liters of NH3. So the percent yield is calculated by dividing that actual 354 liters by the theoretical 415 liters. When you multiply by 100, you get 85.4% for this problem. All right, last one. Here I have a balanced equation. Magnesium chloride reacts with silver nitrate. And I have 52.29 grams of that. And uh, I'm forming that silver chloride from 25 grams of magnesium chloride. What is the percent yield in this reaction? Okay, so let's start off identifying our numbers here. You actually form 52.29 grams. So this is your actual yield. Okay, I need to convert this 25 grams of magnesium chloride with my stoichiometry. 25 grams of magnesium chloride is going to be converted to silver chloride. That's going to give me my theoretical yield. So it's going to take some time to figure out how to deal with these numbers, but practice makes perfect is what I always think. All right, so I need to find the molar mass of magnesium chloride. Magnesium has a mass of 24, and each chlorine is 35, so that gives me a total of 94 grams. My grams cancel out there. Next, I need to do the mole ratio. I want moles of magnesium chloride to cancel. So I'm going to put that down here on the bottom. And then I want mole of silver chloride on top because that's the compound compare with the actual yield that's given. Uh, silver chloride has a 2 in front of it in the balanced equation, and magnesium chloride has a 1. So those cancel. And finally, I'm going to get grams. One mole of silver chloride has a mass, let's look that up on the periodic table, I need to add together one silver and one chlorine. Silver's mass is 108, chlorine's mass is 35, so that's 104 grams. Okay, so I'll fill that in right there. So the moles of silver chloride cancel. We're ready to do our math in the calculator there. So I'm going to multiply straight across 25 times 1 times 2 times 143 and I'm going to divide that by 94. 
and I get 76.1 grams. Now remember, stoichiometry gives you your theoretical yield. So that's what this number is, it's theoretical. Let's get the percent yield back over here. We're going to put actual, which was 52.2, over theoretical, which is 76.1. Don't forget 100, that's what turns this into a percent for So just a quick little bit of math. 52.2 divided by 76.1 times 100%, 68.6% is our yield. And that's the end of that problem. These are hard, and I know they seem to be a little bit long. They take some time. But bring all the questions that you have with you next time, and we will keep practicing. Thanks.